The year is now 1948. The War of Independence breaks out. Hundreds of thousands of Jews in Arab countries find themselves trapped and isolated. This woman, living in Beirut, is determined to save all of them. Not knowing where to begin, she sends a to whom it may concern letter to a kibbutz near the Lebanese border, asking them to please forward this letter to the right address. From there was born one of the legendary stories of Israel's Mossad, Israel's secret service, the story of Shula Cohen, codenamed The Pearl, a mother of seven who risked her life and the well-being of her entire family to save thousands of Jews. In Beirut, Shula Cohen had already began smuggling Jewish children from Lebanon and other Arab countries to Israel. All the Arab soldiers were already in the borders. The Arab League was also in Beirut. I used to make a forum in my house, seven, eight families. First thing they used to tell me, all right, you want our children, why don't you send yours? I sent my children first, the two boys. After, I sent also my daughter. So afterwards, they began to me, please, Shula. The first children I smuggled to Israel, to Metula, was 14. I put them in a jeep, and afterwards I began to send also with the ship by boat to Haifa. And I began to also with the Lufthansa to send them to Turkey, to Istanbul, from Istanbul to Israel. And this is the way we smuggled the Jews from Arab country to Beirut and from Beirut to Israel in different ways. Shula Cohen's activities on behalf of Israel were now beginning to arouse the suspicions of the Lebanese authorities. One morning, a Syrian officer accompanied by several Lebanese soldiers showed up at her home. The Lebanese one, he saw me, he knows me. He took me like that, he put me on the sofa, and he says, please, Shula, we are not so happy to come, but we have an order and we must make a search. Please sit here and don't move. I used to be arrested one week, three days, one day, two days, until I was questioned and go back home. The officer told my daughter, this time Mama will not come back so early. They told me, she will like, get a dress, you're going to come with us. Without a trial, Shula Cohen was convicted of high treason and sentenced to death. The authorities, noting that she was a mother of seven, later commuted her sentence to life in prison. She would spend the first two years in solitary confinement, subjected to extreme physical torture at the hands of her Lebanese jailers. At his palace, King Hussein received an urgent message from Prime Minister Eshkol. Stay out of the war, and we will abide by the 1948 armistice agreement. But Hussein disregarded the Israeli leader, bolstered by a phone call he had received from Nasser. He told the king that Israel's air force had been crushed and that his forces were halfway across the Negev. Nasser urged him to attack Israel from the West Bank and join up with his army. Persuaded by Nasser, Hussein ordered his troops to attack across the armistice lines. His main focus was West Jerusalem, home to 190,000 Jews. Jordanian shells began hitting populated areas of the Israeli capital. One scored a direct hit on the Knesset. That night, the cabinet began to discuss a move of major political significance forced by Jordan's decision to attack Israel, the taking of the old city and East Jerusalem. Minister Yigel Alon and Menachem Begin argued for an immediate attack. The Herut party leader argued that this was a historic moment of opportunity. 
Diane and Chief of Staff Rabin issued the attack orders to General Uzi Narkis. Working with Narkis was a paratrooper brigade under the command of a young colonel, Mordecai Modiger. The battles were fierce, and the Jewish state suffered some of its heaviest casualties of the war. But in less than 24 hours, Israel captured Ammunition Hill and Mount Scopus and swept all the way through to Hebron. The Jordanian army was decimated. All of the major cities on the West Bank were now under Israeli command. At this point, only the old city remained under Arab control. Reports were starting to come in from New York that a UN ceasefire was imminent. If the Israelis were going to take the old city, now was the time. Diane issued the orders to General Narkis. There's one restriction, no artillery or air support in order to protect the holy sites. For Rabin and Narkis, this was a telling moment. 19 years earlier, they had fought for the old city and had been defeated. So I call up Motagur and I tell him, go up to Augusta Victoria, conquer it, conquer the Mount of Olives. From there, you descend to the old city. There, you see the Lion's Gate. Approximately at 10 o'clock, the paratroops arrive there, tanks at the helm, and the paratroops behind them, about 200 soldiers. They enter through the Lion's Gate. From the Temple Mount, the paratroopers sprinted to the western wall to clear it of snipers. There were serious casualties, but in minutes the battle was over. For the first time in 2,000 years, the old city of Jerusalem was in Jewish hands. And for many, it was a moment that was almost impossible to fathom. We arrived at the Kotel and I thought to myself, what am I doing here? What are we going to do now? Chaim Barlev was also there. I said to Chaim, what do you say? Maybe we'll sing the Atikva, the anthem? So we sing it. But in our guts we feel it's not enough. So we decide to pray. Yitzhak Rabin rushed to be with his men. Keeping his emotions in check, he told himself this is no time for weeping. This is a moment of redemption and hope. It was a special moment for Motigor and Chief IDF Chaplain Shlomo Goren. Many years before, the paratrooper commander disclosed to the rabbi a premonition he had about leading the troops that would liberate the old city. At the time, he told Rabbi Goren that if he wanted to be among the first at the Kotel, he should stick close to him. Now as the two men embraced at the wall, Ger exclaimed, Rabbi, I told you I would be here, didn't I? Moments later, Rabbi Goren sounded the chauffeur. Then he spoke his words broadcast around the world. I am speaking to you from the Western Wall. The dream of all the generations has been fulfilled before our eyes. To the nations we declare, we shall protect the holy places of all faiths. For the first time, Jews could return to the old city and pray without restrictions at Judaism's holiest site. the sound of the chauffeur, hardened paratroopers who never prayed in their lives, who knew little about Jewish tradition, stood before the wall in tears. Many prayed on behalf of family members who could not be there to experience that moment. Among the first to arrive were two soldiers who prayed that their Aunt Shula Cohen would be freed from her long captivity in Lebanon. Their prayers would soon be answered when she walked across the border in a POW exchange. She had missed the bar mitzvahs of two sons and her daughter's wedding. 
but now she was finally reunited with her family. Ladies and gentlemen, from Jerusalem, Israel, please welcome Shula Cohen, escorted by her, her daughter, Carmela. Shula, it is a covet and an honor on behalf of the Simon Wiesenthal Center and its Board of Trustees to present to you the Medal of Valor for your unbelievable rescue of tens of thousands of Jews from Arab countries. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.